Hello, my friend. When you lose someone you really love and has been really important to you, never forget that they remain very much a part of you. You can never really lose them completely. It's impossible because they're woven in with the fabric of your existence. All your memories will be completely intertwined with them. And so instead of allowing all of that to be lost, you can find a way of reclaiming it and including it in your daily existence. It is important to come to a place where you're peaceful and accepting enough of their death, of the fact that they are no longer in this world right there with you, and to allow for the fact that they're still fully alive inside of you and will always be inside you and with you. So what that means is that in a weird way, after a loved one dies, they belong more to you than when they were alive. Because of course, they are now with you instead of somewhere else. And they are what they have been in the past and what remains with you, rather than a dynamic, ongoing presence that changes and presents you with new challenges. So that's the sadness. You don't see them evolving. They can't respond to you actively. But they can still respond to you in your imagination because we know them so well that we know how they would respond. So in therapy, often when we work with loss and the person places the lost person in another chair and we do that double chair work where they speak their mind and all their feelings to the person who is lost and then sit in the chair of the lost one and hear what they've said themselves and hear it with the ears of the loved person, they begin to realize that they have that person inside of them as a resource because yes, they can respond to what they themselves have been saying and what they're feeling in the words and the mannerisms and the meanings and the intentions of the loved one they have lost, they can indeed incorporate their loved one's meanings and intentions and feelings. They can indeed take ownership of them in the very same way in which we can inherit material possessions and we choose which objects from our loved ones to keep with us and which to let go of, in that same way we can choose to keep the qualities of our loved ones that we most need and that were most precious to us with us and let go of the difficulty and the tensions and let go of the things we liked less. We can really forgive and forget and choose to hold on to what will give us strength and what will live in us and will become, you know, a growing 
a live experience. In other words, we can allow the good qualities of our loved ones to find new life through us and we can live out some of the unfinished things that our loved ones would have meant us to be able to learn or do. We can bring their life's task and their work to fruition in ourselves. We can benefit from their learning. We can make ourselves stronger and bigger and wider and more understanding and more complete by accepting the gift they give us after they are gone. The gift that remains in our heart. We can either ignore it or we can find it and make the very most of us. And when we do, we come to a joyful, loving relationship with the people we have loved and thought we had lost, but who still very much live in the world of feelings, ideas, relatedness, and everything that is invisible, non-material, they still belong in that part of our world. So be creative with that, my friend, and don't be afraid of it. Be creative, be loving, and pass it on. Take good care in your bereavement and be gentle with your loss.